Jake. And or welcome it... everyone <laughs> to the show. <laughs> it's going to be a we're, we're kind of live wires tonight. It's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let's just say that the pre-show was not something I could broadcast. <laughs> just, just leave it at that. <laughs> That is how that is. Um, so, yeah, so we're finally back on YouTube tonight. Uh, had some issues last week, but I think we're good to go. Um, welcome, everyone. It is Saturday night, and that means it is time for the weekly dig. Yes. Hello. For anyone new to the stream, this is a live show where we dig into anime old and new. I'm Brent. These are my amazing co hosts, John. Hey, hey. And Steve. Hello, hello. So let us start our dig tonight by analyzing an anime movie that we all watched this week, uh, which goes under a couple of different names. Um, Pat Labor, the movie one, is often where you'll find it online. This is, as it sounds, the first Pat Labor movie, yep. um, based off the Pat Labor franchise, which is about um, sort of near future um, um, giant robots being used in construction. And thus crime getting involved and thus needing police, uh, police response. This is interestingly, um, it's interesting seeing how this movie kind of relates to that premise. Um, because boy, it starts out and does not seem like it's about that whatsoever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because it starts with a, a guy taking a very long step off of a short pier, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly Gundam. Um, it's just this <laughs> whole military, you know, um, uh, operation going on. Very, very high tech. Very, very, very mecha military. Um, as folks are going in and trying to stop a rogue uh, labor or mecha. And as always, you know, we, we kind of try to start from the beginning. Um, you know, we've all seen some Pat Labor beforehand. Um, Steve, I, uh, you've seen this movie before, right? D several times. Mm -hmm. um, just, <laughs> just, just a few, just a few. Um, yeah. I, I, Your name's I, in the credits. Yeah, you, you know, ultra, <laughs> few. ultra, ultra fanboy of Pat Labor. Um, no, actually, actually, I have seen this uh, several, several times. I, I love Pat Labor, the whole franchise, except for movie three. Mm. Of which we will not talk about <laughs> does not exist um but no it it, it it was um you're absolutely right if you watch the pat labor series first and you want going to this movie you literally are just gonna be like why is he petting a raven why is he doing a swan dive into tokyo bay and mm -hmm. why is oh my god this is oshi this is so oshi and wait a minute why are there mecca jumping out of air Mm -hmm. so yeah but it's also oshi beautifully rendered mm -hmm. and um it's and the good thing about this movie is that you don't really need to see the pat labor series true true yeah. absolutely it stands alone on its own yeah. pretty well mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and john did you seen this before you know <laughs> this is the funny part about about hmm. time and memory um <laughs> i had seen bits and pieces of pat labor over eons mm. i mean just mm -hmm. i i couldn't even tell you what parts of the tv show i had seen sure i sat down and started watching this continued watching i'm like this looks really familiar i watched most of this in japanese oh wow okay <laughs> like a really long time ago mm -hmm. because i i didn't know what it was i'm like well i like pat labor mm -hmm. and i'm like as i'm watching the film i'm like Oh my gosh! I've seen this. <laughs> I can't believe this. It's like because I remember the the labor when they're doing the full expedition out to stop the labor in the woods. Oh, yeah. and just watching it, and I can't remember whether I watched it with a friend of mine or several people, but we were mm. all just like, "Wow, yeah. the mech work on this is amazing!" You know, they're really yeah. the deployment. They're not just mm -hmm. solely machines on machines. They've got like human recon and scout mm -hmm. teams that are going out mm -hmm. and doing stuff. And I'm like, "Oh, this is awesome!" Mm -hmm. There's and I had no idea what anybody yeah. said. Oh yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say that was <laughs> an experience. Um... Yeah, I was again another like Megazone two three. Yeah. No idea, but you can kind of get the gist of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, this actually reminds me a little bit of um, uh, there was a Gundam OVA just popped in my mind I can't remember the name of it um, but it was about um, boots on the ground soldiers during the one year war of Gundam 
Um, so mecha, you know, mecha are out there, but we never focus on a mecha pilot. We're always focusing on like the engineers, the ground support staff, all that kind of stuff. Right. right. And this sequence very much, you know, um, uh, had that that sense of you know, giant robots exist, but we need all these other things to kind of make everything make sense and understand what's right. going on. It's really cool. Um, Which is what I liked about Heavy Object, the series, mm. where you've got a pilot and an enormous war machine. Mm-hmm. And then really the story is all about how all of their supporting units and all the engineering mm. teams get together to put the machine back together when it's damaged and mm. then to do all these other things that you need ground crew for. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so it's like this kind of thing where it's like, yeah, you, you know, physically the labors are just kind of unwieldy mm-hmm. so you're not gonna sneak up anybody in a labor <laughs> right you're just right. crashing through trees knocking mm-hmm. stuff around and it's like well the, the little meat puppets are the probably the quietest thing that you can send in to figure out where the labor that's run amok where yeah. it is mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The, so. the, the and that's one of the reasons why i love pat labor so much is is that it's an accessible mecha mm-hmm. anime in that you know this is not something like gundam where it's just like it's the super machine that we're going to use to win the war or mm-hmm. you know you know Messenger Z or, or you know any of those mm. this giant robot and this is thing and that that's gonna you know save the you know the little robot knob control <laughs> yeah, yeah. and, 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 and ten year old boy that comes mm. along with the little controller. Mm-hmm. But um there are groups that <laughs> but there's but for the pat labors, uh patrol labors and all that stuff like you guys were saying is that there's this whole there's an engineering support group, there's a there's a repair mm-hmm. support group, there's you know, you actually get to see where the barracks are barracks mm-hmm. barracks life yeah. in this movie is actually very apparent yeah. um in in all this and and there's this neat little scene in the movie where one of the the truck drivers that's the other part of it is is that they actually mm-hmm. address the issue of how does the freaking thing get there because you, right. you can't just just fly there or just walk there <laughs> you know 50 miles they actually put it on a truck mm-hmm. and have to drive to a point and find a place to you know do the thing mm-hmm. But uh, but one of but the, she is but, generally very thoughtful. Well, yeah, creation mm-hmm. yeah. to not have, you know, even though even Gellion did it with the giant, you know, extension cord. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, still it's like transporting a thing of that size to a place is inefficient as oh, hell. Oh, let, you know? let's <laughs> let, let, let's not forget the Evangelions weren't just you know the the, the giant umbilical cord. Uh, it was also the giant empty buildings with the giant empty shafts below them. Did they yeah, accelerate right. them up towards? Like, that's very practical. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, the bear, is that the downtown bank building? Oh, it's just a <laughs> shell for an elevator. Oh, yeah. ah, cool. No. Oh, okay. That's Neat. Right. Well, I was the- trying to open the door the other day, but it just wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Let me into my bank. That was my money. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, yeah. And, well, that's the thing. Is, I, I think one of the reasons why they lead off with such a heavy sci fi mecha. Um, scene is because you don't really get another one until the very end. <laughs> it's right. really just bookended with this um, crime investigation story, really. Um, um, as they discover that labors are starting to go uh, run amok in in Tokyo, um, I really appreciate how this movie dives into the to the underlying sort of world building conceit. Um, around the Babylon project and the idea that there's this massive construction project that folks are trying to work on um, and asking the question of, okay, what happens when like corruption sets in? What happens when there are weaknesses in that system that allow somebody to um, to uh, control it uh, or, to, or to, do, to do nasty things with it? Because um, I think you know, a lot of other, you know, Think of you know the movie version of any given TV show, and it often goes off in a like really wild direction. Yeah. Whereas this feels like a, kind of a natural progression of, of that. Which well, as, as Steve has brought up before, you know, the, the that we've ta- all talked about mm-hmm. is like the post-war construction. Boom oh yeah, and all of the you know great construction to give people houses, and also mm-hmm. the rampant corruption yep. involved in it. Structure, so yeah. this felt like. <clears throat> Sort of that lot of hey everybody, do you remember a time like? Uh... Well, and it should also be pointed out. I think it also wasn't just that time. You know, this came out in the late '80s, and you had all the, the big yeah. construction of the '80s. And so I'm sure it was fresh on folks' mind. This was the boom from time. the headlines. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I, I think that's one. And it's again one of the one of the reasons why it's so important to 
have that context and know the history because I'm sure this felt very fresh. This felt very relevant at the time. Yeah. Um, whereas to us watching it, it's like, okay, why is construction corruption an, an issue here? Like, why would we care? Um, but uh, I will also say it is basically an hour and a half crime investigation story. <laughs> like it, yeah. The, the, the middle three quarters of this is kind of long and drawn out. And yep. there comes a point, it came a point for me halfway through where I was like, I'm ready for some giant robots to blow things up or something. <laughs> um, th- and it's not that it's, it's not just the fact the movie is deliberately slow. There is an unevenness to the movie at, at times where um, it'll be like long conversation sequences and then like punctuations of really over the top humor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which function nicely as you know breathers from that that but the tonal shifts are sometimes a little too abrupt for my tastes wait until you get to pat labor too (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah well i i thought the old school like 1950s cop and his assistant going around Mm -hmm. investigating locations where you've got everything else going on at headquarters Mm -hmm. and then you have these quiet walking around moments Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) where it's like yes it does it it feeds entirely into the the whole idea of this investigation these guys yeah um but it's like it's so you're right it's so like it's a giant robot gonna pop out (laughs) (laughs) no you're walking through like the the tiled flooring of what used to be a bathhouse Mm -hmm. that's no longer there yeah oh look another building Mm-hmm. Oh look, a place that's an empty shell. It's like, are we getting somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> Some point. And that's the thing. Get... It, it, it's a good example of, of what Oshii I think likes to do is, um, and we talk about this, the, the, the difference between um, sort of experiential storytelling and and, and other stuff, um, where um, Oshii likes to really bring you into a setting and make you feel like you're part of that setting. And so those scenes, you feel like you're walking along with those detectives on yeah. the, you know, they, they, they're spending all day just going from house to house, walking through and you're not hurrying. Like you're trying to see what's going on. And so, yes, I feel that also I have a life to get on with. <laughs> <laughs> and um, again, it just, it just felt like it was, it was pushed a little, you know, a little farther than it needed to. I liked um, that it, beyond just how, how it's paced to do what it's doing, mm-hmm. I liked the sort of sense of um, a little bittersweet nostalgia yeah. for these places that they're investigating, that they're going mm-hmm. through, yeah. were, in very real terms, hearts of neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, and they addressed that at one point. It's like, you know, these places weren't run down at one point. Yeah. You know, they were they were parts of the neighborhoods that they were in and this was this was all now brought about by this construction boom and places have been just raised and left Mm -hmm. and it's like i get that kind of sense of bittersweetness because you know progress does sometimes do that so i got that still more robots (laughs) (laughs) well the whole thing for for me for uh matsui the 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 stouter um Mm. uh, detective and his his assistant whose name i can't remember um he guy know, intensity guy inten- <laughs> right he uh, that detective pops up a lot in the pat labor series mm. you know yeah. he, he's he's basically go to goto's um go-to guy in, in as in terms of the detective department that's one of his sources of information mm. and when i you know when i first watched this movie that was actually what drew me into the movie was, mm. was that whole sequence of because it does go on for like ten minutes, I think. <laughs> and 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 going from place to place to place, mm-hmm. where Matsui's starting to put things together. You know, the bird cages. He's going to mm-hmm. Oba's former places, and they're all old and they're all run down. And there, mm-hmm. there's a point to that, mm-hmm. and that point is about the Babylon project. Mm-hmm. And Matsui is, is trying to put those things together, and he, as he's putting that together, Noda uh, is also starting to figure it out about three quarters of the way through mm-hmm. right before they lay siege to, to the Babylon. Mm. Um, to the Ark. It, yeah, to the Ark. So what's interesting is that the Babylon project is talked about in the OVA. Oh, yeah. OVA 
ad nauseum. Like mm-hmm. that's a huge thing. So that's just like a movie about the Babylon project. But the Matsui thing, the, the walk around was for me just kind of one of those things where it's, it was someone walking through saying, you know, that this is that the past is going away. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the past is done it's over this is what we do with the past we, we raise it we get rid of it we make new things out of it mm-hmm. and you come to realize oba couldn't handle that and oba mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. couldn't you know he you know his, his name is is religious anyway mm-hmm. um jehovah and you know he's looking at the ark as you know the battle part or project as the ark mm-hmm. and he's seeing all this destruction going on about around him mm-hmm. and so oba you know puts his plan into action mm-hmm. and that's so he's just walking around trying to figure this out and you can sort of get like when you're walking if you actually pay attention to, to this long rambling mm-hmm. walk around mm-hmm. you do start to see things you're why is he looking at that building why is he mm-hmm. looking at tall buildings? why is matsui ta- looking at tall buildings you realize that matsui doesn't really understand why he's looking at tall buildings but mm-hmm. he's looking at them and he knows mm-hmm. you know why he, he's like it's there but it mm-hmm. can't quite grab it yet. Yep. Yep. And so, as a person who loves um, crime novels and things like that, mm. that really drew me in, in into it. And I was when I originally saw that the third movie was coming out, and that he was actually going to be the lead character in that movie. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he and his assistant are the lead characters in that movie. Cool. HS, and I saw watched it. Well, no, not cool because they, they didn't really bad mm, job with that. Mm. So I was really, really upset with that. But gotcha. it was, so, I, 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 I disagree. I, I, I was okay with the robot stop popping out. Just well, no, no. Uh, yeah. uh, please understand. What, what, what I mean yeah. by that is, is, is more that the, um, the pacing doesn't fit what right. you expect from a mecha movie, oh, right? Totally. And and, yeah, 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 and, yeah. and you're, you're watching yeah. through, and you're like, why are we getting this? Why, why is it so slow? Why is all this kind of stuff? Um, it's funny watching this after watching Beautiful Dreamers and Ghost in the Shell, because you know you look at the progression, and this is my gosh, we are moments away from Ghost in the Shell, I think, in Oshii's mind. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. so many visuals and so many things, but he's he's applying that to this story, um, and like, you can see everything just kind of gestating, kind of kind of kind of getting there, um, and it just hasn't quite coalesced in the way that it did in Ghost in the Shell. Um, so none of it is bad and none of it, none of it is, is, um, feels out of place. It's just all these different pieces, you know, that, that, that are all, um, 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 interacting in different ways than, than, right. than they are as we got to move yeah. The internal affairs issues going on between yep. departments right. and what's going on with the government and what's happening and, yep. you know, interference with things that are going on. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I mean, ghost in the shell, here yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Much less Akira with all that stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Um, yeah, because and this is actually one of the other, other interesting th- uh, things where um, you get. Um, I appreciate how the movie sets up the fact that there's this, not quite conspiracy, but that there's there's a a broad cover up. Um, of what's going on, that the people are kind of keeping keeping things quiet about the, the various issues going on because of the, the political yeah. consequences, and that then like that does blow up, like then they have to address that, and you see the consequences of that. You see people going, okay, we can't do that anymore. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got to do that. Um, in so many other anime, that is just kind of you know kept off screen, um, and I really liked that because it it did feel like it was a plot thread that they were leaning on pretty heavily throughout the, the movie and then to actually get payoff on that kind of feels feels good yeah um that's kind of interesting um but yeah there's there's a you know, a lot of oshi conversation scenes that are so classically <laughs> just and we're going to talk for the next you know five minutes and nothing else is going to happen um which is with lovely things. lighting with, like that yeah. shot you've got right there exactly oh yeah absolutely <laughs> mood um, lighting um but yeah um, and so, yeah, we have, we have our investigation. We, we move on from that um, as we kind of figure everything out. Um, what's weird is that the basic plot feels like an episode of, like, Pat Labor OVA. Um, yeah. You know, it's this... Yeah, yeah, 
Labors are going crazy. Oh, it's a resonant frequency. You know, it's a frequency humans can't hear. And so we, we figure that out and we, you know, then we, we, um, we um, find out who's, who's, in, who's responsible and we, you know, address that. Um, it doesn't have the complexity I'm used to from Oshii movie plots where there's, you know, this person's covering up this, which is covering up this, and there's, you know, you're going down this rabbit right. hole and so forth. Uh, which, again, I think is very appropriate for Pat Labor. Um, but it's just one of those... Um, uh, one of those aspects of the movie that was kind of kind of refreshing in a way, <laughs> um, kind of nice. Uh, yeah, then we move on to the assault on the Ark, um, and I got to admit, when I think of this movie, this is all that comes to mind. Um, or this is the first thing that comes to mind. I will say is is this whole sequence inside the Ark. This is what I remember um, because, oh my gosh, do they put all the budget into these sequences? Oh yeah, boy, do they! Whoa. Um, and they start early. You know, the whole sequence of them going out in the rain and the typhoon. Um, and again, let's let's let's, let's uh, connect this to things. Um, typhoons in Japan are a very common occurrence. Like this is <laughs> what you're used to, and you're used to hearing, "Don't go out in the typhoon. It's very yeah. dangerous. Don't do that thing." And so, for your heroes to go in and brave that typhoon for a, a nobler cause will hit home. Yeah, don't take a 60-ton uh, labor out <laughs> right, in, right, in right. the open ocean with, uh, you know, a little dinghy boat. Don't do that. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> Not the best idea. Which I, I loved yeah, when yeah. they were getting ready for it. They're like, okay, we've waterproofed it. It's like, when you see Noah, she's sitting yeah. in the cockpit. <laughs> There's no, like, mm, interior. The yeah. new generation of labor that's on the Ark mm -hmm. is, like, a completely encased and yeah. presumably waterproof, you know, germ proof i guess i don't know whatever but noah in hers it's like her face is sticking out sure if that thing goes in the drink mm -hmm. <laughs> nope mm -hmm. yeah. it's gonna fill with water instantly mm -hmm. um yeah so I, I can only assume what they mean by waterproofing is like waterproofing you know so yeah, that so it can get rained on yeah you know? exactly <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um but yeah it's um it's fascinating because of that that is and this is one of those movies that escalates stakes escalates stakes extremely well in my opinion yeah. um because you know you you establish all throughout the movie what's going on what, what's, what's happening and they just keep ratcheting up ratcheting up ratcheting up for this last you know good chunk of the movie the last like quarter of the movie is just constantly raising stakes as you're moving uh further and further up um uh you still have some weirdnesses um when the uh, who is the half Japanese woman? Kanuka. Kanuka. Yes. Um, Clancy. Yeah, Clancy. Clancy. Thank you. Um, yeah. You know, boy, there's some fan service. <laughs> Where you know they they bring her in because she's a fan favorite for her to be there. <laughs> Just it. That's it. <laughs> and, and, yeah, you, you need you're... people to buy tickets. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's why you do this. Yeah, it, it, so it was just it, when I was watching it for the first time, you know, I was just like, oh, I guess Kanuka Clancy is not around. But then you see the phone conversation that Goto's having mm -hmm. and mentions her name, and you're like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, is she <laughs> coming? Is she she coming? Yes, there she is. And you see her face, and you see her a couple times, and then the, the labor takes over, and then you don't see her. Again. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what's interesting is that the first time I saw the movie, I thought she died. Mm hmm. Because yep. at the end, yep. you don't see her unless you're paying attention. Uh, in mm -hmm. the end scene where Noah and and um, what's his name are just you know happy mm -hmm. that, that they're alive and mm -hmm. swinging around and in yeah. blurry in the background you see <laughs> like kneeling with a with like a med med person just like yeah there's a band aid here, <laughs> here. sure that kidney can just get stuck back in there you're fine yeah you're pretty fine. much pretty much. Well, I mean, Noah says, says that, like, or not, mm -hmm. Noah's told, it's like, oh, don't, don't shoot, she's yeah. in there, don't mm -hmm. kill her. Yeah. So it's like, I was a little apprehensive, but I was mm -hmm. kind of like, ah, I'd, I, maybe they won't kill her? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, probably <laughs> unlikely, we'll see what happens. Exactly, yeah. Um, I did like the animatics of the of the floors falling out of the arc mm -hmm. when they were blowing the balls and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I was yeah. just like, oh, Speaking cool. of... Um, wise use of cgi in this and computers in general um like seeing the stuff on the screen felt like computer work it didn't feel like somebody you know animating that to kind of look like a computer uh right. 
and then also like the the the, the 3d models often with 3d models folks try to make them look realistic and instead these felt like no they are intentionally abstract because we're showing you all these floors at once and so you want the visual to be you know very straightforward for any right. normal computer operator so yeah. well done there um uh, but yeah i mean this ending just builds and builds and builds oh there we go um, with all of the different things that are that, um, that are going on as they're, they're, they're building up uh, and trying to get to that center. And I really appreciated the um, the creep factor as we're mm -hmm. moving along and moving along um, and you know they're, they're, they're trying to get up to that, that that thing and the elements of seeing all these labors all lined up. And you know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, yeah. But they, they let you kind of sit with that for a little while and, and, and imagine. Um, uh, and wasn't that scene of them driving through and like uh, only seeing that what's mm, in the headlights? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 your, and your point of view is that you're inside the cockpit of that little Jeep thing. Yeah. And you're driving and it's just like, going, okay, we're going, going, ah, hole. Yep. Ah, hole. <laughs> Around the, the corner, thing that's oh, gonna look, kill. there's oh, a thing. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, totally. And I just love how they have, like, a giant size 38. Yeah. Revolver, long barrel. With a pat labor. labor. <laughs> With a pat labor. And they're shooting, like, these little small, tiny little crab things. Like, ah, we're going to get you. <laughs> Well, how about your yeah. crazy friend there with the with the giant anti tank rifle? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. <laughs> this is like, oh, <laughs> wow, y'all bore out the big stuff today. Yep. Nice, absolutely. Um, and then they enter this facility, and again, it's it's abandoned. It's totally empty. Um, and so having to sh turn everything on, make sense of everything, um, and figure out how to how to work all of this this machinery, uh, and then realizing there's somebody here. Yeah, the the homage to uh, Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. yep um and so they go up and it took me until literally about 10 minutes ago to realize the whole significance of all that um uh because she or one of the significance of that because noah gets dispatched up to find out what's going on um and she gets up there and finds it's full of birds evil birds evil whacked out birds <laughs> um which um one of the reasons it's there is because um, he's researching things that that have frequencies beyond human hearing, and so he had all these birds to test that, which is why he saw all the cages everywhere and all the feathers everywhere, and so he brought them all up to here, um, in, in at the very end, which is which is why they're all here filling this spot. To roost. To roost. Um, it's just a wonderfully creepy scene. Um, mm -hmm. And a great use of just imagery, of just boom, you know. No one saw this coming. I <laughs> think this particular visual. Um, yeah, I was expecting Hoda to be alive up there, mm -hmm. like somehow he had cheated yeah. death or something, because they never they said they never found his body. Right, right. exactly. So it's like mm -hmm. I was waiting for that to him turn around, like be sitting in a chair yeah. and do the hello, Mister. <laughs> <Ball." laughs> right, exactly. Like, ah! yeah. <laughs> like, nope. Instead, it's just this creepy ass raven. Yeah. <laughs> like, Ooh! <laughs> yeah, the ravens had just little blinking eyes and just yeah. and, mm -hmm. oh, oh, ew, yep, oh, it's and again, peck your eyes out. And it's you know one of the things that she does you know very well in general is um, um, connecting all the dots. Right, he's a very deliberate director, uh, and so you have that raven at the beginning, you have the raven at the end, um, and the, the 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 ID badge is there on the raven, and that's how they got the, the signal. Mark of the beast. There. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and interesting that Noah is in the Ark. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, I was just like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Oh, she read a lot of the Bible. That's just yeah, that's apparently just <laughs> big Bible guy. Um, and then, and again, I appreciate it. And this is one of those things where I think the movie handles this well. Where I think other directors might be tempted to then. Um, Try to dive deep on, on on this and make the you know make the birds attack Noah or something. Yeah, and it's like no, this is just a you know this is here to creep you out and be a a, a good movie moment. You know we can move yeah. on from that. That's fine. Um. Uh. And so yeah, and so and again, of course, things get worse as the virus uh, uh, infects them, as we all kind of expect it's it's going to do. Um. And so they. 
<laughs> they do the thing. I, I'll, I'll admit, this is one of those unfortunate sci-fi things of how do we resolve this? Oh, there's actually an off switch. <laughs> so just go down and you happen to be like underneath the off so one of the off switch just go down and hit the thing and that will take it take care of it like nobody's mentioned this before we had no idea but we we just found the thing oh good well turn it off and turn it back on <laughs> okay cool although i would love to know if it is a common design solution that to turn off your giant platform you have to pull a gun out and shoot a bolt. Si- well, you know, yeah, like a three fifty seven. Even yeah. you know, it's like a dirty, hairy piece of weaponage. Yeah. <laughs> like wow. Name name the movie that that happened in. I can't Sci-fi think. movie that happened. I'll give you a hint. So you can learn any Weaver. Alien. You got it. For an astronomer, self destruct. Is to fire a gun into the control panel or whatever. Um. No, the, the to release the bolts and everything, you know, mm-hmm. to shoot the gun, you know, to, to go through that whole process. Mm-hmm. Oh. In an Astromo, to do that, she had to do that too. There was a specialized gun that, that you, know, you had to open the thing, she yeah. had to shoot into it, and then she was able to do self destruct from the yeah. so I'm going to guess that the, that this whole thing might have been homage to that as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, huh. Well done, Patrick. You 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 got it well before I did. Um, interesting. interesting. Well, and it's also clearly a very special gun. Like it has two little wings on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's 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 definitely not definitely meant to be like that that single purpose device. And you do have the idea that you know, from an engineering perspective, you know, people can't just clink press the thing. They can't accidentally turn a switch. Right. It requires this explosive force to actually right. trigger it. I can understand that. Yeah, because my dumbass would come in there and go, like, hey, what's this? <laughs> yeah. Click. Boom. I, did, I didn't mean to just destroy this multi-billion dollar project. Sorry. Exactly. My bad. I was just looking for a place to eat lunch. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, um, I was waiting for that to be, like, catastrophic kind of thing where it's like, mm-hmm, oh, right. you have to and fire this thing fire. and it's like, a, it's like a depleted uranium <laughs> slug and you're going to set off a small atomic bomb or something. Right. Like it's like a wind or something really dramatic and it's like, it's dramatic. It is indeed, but mm-hmm. not nearly as catastrophic as I was hoping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a good example of, of where I think it's hard in movies like this where it's doing a lot at once. Um, you know, it is it is a noir film at times um it's a crime film at times it's an action movie at times um and so there's only so much uh risk you want your characters to be in at a given time before your heart gives out kind of you know and it's like (laughs) okay i didn't really sign up for die hard here right you know um and so I think because you're right, you know, I, I saw this happening. I was like, oh, and then the, the you know the, the ceiling's gonna fall on her, right? Because everything's falling apart. Right. Um, Something terrible. Right. No. But it, it, it's not that moment, you know, in the yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, and then. But you and plus you have the but but in between of all those are the funny moments like the tomato scene. Sure. Yes. Well, and that's the other the other weird thing about the movie is that you have this very deliberate comedy worked into it yeah um which uh uh yeah for me like it always worked um but it often felt a little um i don't even know how to describe it um it's not forced and it's not inappropriate cliche no more like offbeat Yes, um, it's often pushed more than I would have expected in the sequence, um, in, 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 in that, that thing, where I expected humor, I expected, you know, jokes and so forth, but sometimes it just kind of goes way over the top. Oh, you didn't, you weren't, you weren't expecting the setup. <sighs> like, it took a long time for the tomato scene, it, the mm. tomato scene took a long time for, oh, yeah. the, for, for the payoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, not quite that much more like, um, the payoff felt, I don't know. I, I, I can't put it into words. Well, how'd you feel about the moped scene where it's like, oh, they were worried they were going to get in trouble for riding the moped. <laughs> and then that comes into the review be like, oh, you're a yeah. two week suspension for riding tandem on a moped. Right. That's not allowed. Right. It's um, like, that, I think. 
I I enjoyed the humor of it. I mm-hmm. enjoyed the 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 idea of it as the as the means to release him to do his mm-hmm. investigation when yep. officially he was not supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I was like that was very nicely done, but yeah. it was you know it was not nearly as funny as I would like, and you almost could have really kind of lived without it. But you know eh. that actually worked for me it, once we got the reveal that Ota had done it himself like he he, yeah. he he made Noah talk to find out what's going on um I gotta laugh out of that one um because again it, it felt more in tune with the overall um tone of the movie um whereas when he freaks out and we suddenly move into fisheye lens um that just yeah. felt kind of weirdly over the top for me mm. um it's, it's that kind of stuff where it's just kind of like I, I know, it's, it's it's interesting um, but again, different strokes. Well, um, it made you think, if nope. nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, no. That's true. no. It did. <laughs> I just zoned yeah. out entirely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. It did. Um, yeah, and then we we get that the, the big climax where we get this interesting thing because one of the things that disappointed me about the movie as I was going through is that Noah became a side character. Um, she's basically just watching everything happening. She's she's doing the the, the tomato and so forth. But she felt very much like there was nothing for her to do throughout the movie. Um, and so it was very satisfying to me at the end to have her be kind of the, the, the hero uh, in the end. Because that is her role. Like, she is the operator. She is not, the, you know, th- this, um, the, the responsibilities of the characters in the movie very much made sense. Where he's doing the investigating, he's going off. She's a pilot. Like, that's not kind of her, 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 her thing. But then, when she, you know something happens with the, with the mecca, she's 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 doing everything, and she's using her knowledge of labors to to you know uh, resolve things at the end. Of oh, this thing would be here, so I have to go out here, I have to pull this out, all that kind of stuff. It's very, very clever. Um, but yeah, uh, and we have the the, the final ending. And one shot I do want to call out, which does feel very much like kind of. This is the the theme of the movie. Um, when the two of them face off um, and the sun rises. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> on the old and the new. Right? And it's like, here we go. Here's, here's the old facing against the new as the new is trashing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And inevitably, right, like, the, you know, she's not going to win in that sense. She's not going to defeat the Type Zero. Um, but she can at least stop it. And she can at least do right. something about it. Which I think was, was really clever. So that scene harkens back to the OVA, or was mm. it the OVA? Mm. Harkens back to a scene where she and Kanuka fight in, in the series uh, um, as a training you know, kind of thing. They, mm. They're both in labors and they're, they're going against each other. And uh, Kanuka teaches Noah a lesson by just standing still. And so Noah uses up her battery power uh, in that particular fight and right. loses the fight simply because she didn't think on how to use the labor, as you, as you pointed out, how to use the labor. So when you have that wonderful, which is a gorgeous scene mm-hmm. um, of the sun coming up and the two of them facing off, and it's still very much, you know, old versus new, you know, like the old samurai way versus the new samurai way <laughs> kind of thing going on. And, but what Noah's doing is that she's trying to wait out the type zero, seeing mm. the type zero is going to power down. Yeah. And, which, that's, and that's, that's what she's Which is clever, do. which makes it, because it's been a lot more yeah. active than right. Alphonse has. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Hmm. That's very interesting. Um, which also explains why when she goes up to, to shut it down and it keeps on moving, she's like, just shut down. Like, you should be, shut down. <laughs> you should be done by now. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that worked. Those that Duracell worked. batteries, they work right. so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, they keep going and going. And going. And going. That's Energizer. I don't Energizer know. money. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Um, I apologize <laughs> for getting my battery mascot <laughs> sayings wrong. Darn it, Brent. It's Darn not it. anime. It doesn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I might argue that someday. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Um, we'll yep. schedule that for a later time. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, I, I also wonder in, in here, um, like you say, when, when Kanuka wakes up, um, 
it's interesting when, when I think to myself about how I would make this movie. Um, you wonder, like, would it have been better to not know? And to wonder if she's just oh, dead. Yeah. Or does it raise the stakes? No, she's alive. She's conscious. She knows what's going to happen to her. Like, that's kind of worse. <laughs> yeah. If, if this, all, this all happened. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, it's just interesting seeing them deliberately put that into the movie. And this is the other thing is, you remember, every moment of this had to be planned and drawn and put in there. Um, yeah. So I think the fact that they put it in does add a, a sense of drama to that moment. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then, of course, they save the day all as well. Um, and uh, uh, we get the very <laughs> surprisingly happy ending. <laughs> um, I was not ready for that. Um, I was you know, kind of like you guys. You know, without knowing there was other Pat Labor movies moving on, I was like, is half the squad going to die here? Like, they could totally yeah. do that. <laughs> They could, but they did yeah. not. They took the high yeah. road for comedy and love. Right. <laughs> exactly. And because it's Pat Labor, right? Like, it's not that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. You know, we, we, we don't have to do that with every single, every single show. It, it's not Game of Thrones. Right. Exactly. It's not Gundam. Um, <laughs> and then Pat Labor 2 happens. That's, 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 that's very true. Um, it is one of the disadvantages, as reflecting on this, that one of the downsides of watching these things out of time, um, you know, much later is that you do know that they they survived. You do know that there were more in the right. franchise, that they that things changed around. Where going in in 1989, whenever it was, when they made this movie, Oshik totally could have done that. Like, he, he totally could have yeah. killed off some of the characters. But. And then Pat Labor 2, the new class, would have been right, exactly. <laughs> half the original <laughs> cast and then kill them off and have an all new class in, in movie three. Exactly. No. Yes. Um, but this is not Gun Parade March. Um, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah. So that is Pat Labor the movie. Anything else you guys wanted to bring up and talk about? Um, I just wanted to say that this time around, though, what was very interesting for me, because this was new for this watch for me, was about a year ago at this little thing on, online called OnCon. Yeah. I did this. I did this. Um, you know this this online um sort of you know bidding war and i got this kind of like storyboards yes you did you know kind of thing mm -hmm. and so it was really kind of actually it was kind of neat actually looking at what oshi was doing yeah you know and and writing this and you know describing some of these things like mm -hmm. you know you're talking about the fish the fish eyed i don't know if you can see that or not yeah it comes in oh there we go yep yeah so wow. you know, that's that's the storyboard right there. Wow. So it was kind of neat. Like periodically, I would just kind of stop the movie and just kind of look, <laughs> look at the storyboards and just go wow. cross reference. Yeah. Wow, and, and just thinking like you know like how this was probably. I would love to see the the storyboards for um, the egg. Angel's egg. Angel's egg. Yeah, because oh. that can't be. Can, can you just imagine that? Because this at least makes sense. <laughs> Angel's egg makes sense. You just have to be a yeah. more highly evolved human. <laughs> or absolutely out of your mind. There's that too. That What's works well. Yeah. <laughs> the John thin line Wilson. between genius and madness. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. glad I, I finally saw Pat, Pat Labor with, with English. <laughs> 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 made the film make much more sense. You want to talk about long periods of time? <laughs> <laughs> you have like mech fighting and then the final part of the film try not having the entire middle where you're like it seems important he's doing something why are they walking around i don't know what's happening there apparently there's something happening now there's a bunch of people talk uh. <laughs> yeah. it's a get, much better film <laughs> just just get ready for pet labor too because that one has exposition like yes. really... oh boy and there's I actually a very there's actually a famous scene in there that goes on admittedly for longer than it probably should mm. and 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 that's 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 me saying it because I, <laughs> I love those kinds of things nice. like i love those exposition kind of speeches which is why i like this kind of stuff and mm. goes in the show and things like that yeah but even then i was just like watching a pat labor too just like watching that one scene where they're 
literally standing above the river with some dudes fishing and then mm-hmm. this t- discussion this long drawn out philosophical discussion here's like yeah I got it five minutes ago. Please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's when you turn off the subtitles Please. and you just sit there and go, oh, the fishing looks lovely. Yeah. The colors they used. No, 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 Burry. Let's pretend this is not her. Exactly. <laughs> They're just fishing for crayfish. It's, it's fine. It's just cute. Yeah. Um, as you learned, Patrick, you know, they, they, they turned the exhibition up to 11 in, in uh, Pat Labor 2. That they do. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. boy. Um, I, I, Pat Labor 2, I would argue, is... Well, we'll save that for Pat Labor 2. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's fascinating to compare the two because they're similar in a lot of ways or different in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. But I think it's also, it, it's really neat watching this, comparing it to Ghost in the Shell. Because um, you, you yeah. just, you, you do see just all of those, all of those, all the imagery yeah. start to coalesce. Right. Um, but it's just not in his mind yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is Pat Labor 1. A lot of fun. Um, definitely a, a, in contrast, to a lot of other Oshi movies, this is a relatively uh, digestible film, right? Where you watch it through, and you're like, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, understand, yeah. you know, whatever. There's obviously imagery and stuff going on and symbolism and so forth, but it just kind of moves all the way through there. Um, very, very, yes. very. Easy. Yeah, you're not going to get bogged down on the imagery if you don't want to. Right, exactly. Where you can just ride yeah. right along with this and be like, ah, yeah, that was a you know, decently entertaining film. Yeah, exactly. It's easy to watch. It's easy mm-hmm. and entertaining. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, that will do it. Um, so we're going to take a quick break for just a few minutes, and then we'll be right back to talk about more modern anime and the latest anime news. So we will be right back. <laughs> 